Hi everybody, good evening. Thanks for joining us for the live stream um, tonight. Um, as usual, we think we've got an idea what we're doing, but we're gonna have to figure it out as we go along. So tonight, Panda is gonna show us how to demo. Um, and hopefully if you tuned in on time, you saw a couple of really cool demos um, go by, um, which if I'm correct, are all made of cables, GL. Um, so tonight, uh, Panda is gonna be doing most of the patching. I'm here in a supporting role. And uh, also to ask uh, the questions that you might want to ask, uh, just kind of co-host, um, basically. Um, just be, uh, yeah, just make sure that things are clear for people, basically. Yes, Alkama here showed us how to demo since 1887. Tom, oh. I, didn't, I didn't know you'd been around that long, man. Only wow. 20 years next year. <laughs> uh, okay, o only 20 years. Well, you've got to be yeah. good with after 20 years. <laughs> okay. Um... Yeah, um, thank you all for coming. Um, I hope that some more people are coming, but we will just start. And um, we have this little agenda here in our totally professional PowerPoint presentation. Um, so this is what we are gonna go through this evening. So first of all, what the fuck are demos? So um, all the name, like most of the names, I see that know what they are, but we want to just give like a really short general introduction because maybe cables is used by some new demo sceners, um, mm -hmm. and um, that was always one of the goals. So um, we will just explain what demos are, what demos parties are, etc. Et um, then we go directly into patching and um, have a look at uh, a demo we did and have a look at the general setup, like basically all demos we do have like similar layout in cables. Uh, they, they use chip one timing up and everything is structured basically the same way, more or less. Um, it's always a bit different, but um, there is... So what we want to do is like build like a basic demo that is synchronized to music that probably has totally not fitting together parts or something, but we just want to have like a demo that runs from zero to 100. And um, yeah, so the next thing is we, we are patching live and uh, putting in audio and putting in a basic timing and uh, have a look at the timeline and uh, keyframing. And also if you don't like keyframing, we show like how we do it without keyframes. Um, the next part is post-processing and how to set up like we have most demos uh, uh, consist of different scenes um, that are played after each other. So sometimes you have a crossfade or something, but we just say like we have uh, multiple scenes and we want to make them look more uh, the same or like have the same post-processing so they fit better together and we show like the general setup of this. Um, then we want to um, use the audio um, Fourier transformation FFT uh, analysis uh, to to show some stroboscope effects and use a MIDI file um, to synchronize the audio to the visuals. So use like MIDI commands um, that were exported uh, parallel to the audio, and we can use those um, basically instruments to show some effects or like to time stuff. So this point alone like makes the demo so much more dynamic and, and uh, alive uh, without without having to keyframe a lot, basically. Um, yeah, and the last one is like how to package uh, a cables demo because we are in the web world, um, but demo scene exists much longer and basically you want to submit an executable file for Windows in the end at uh, your demo party. So uh, we go over how to export and how to package this um, basically and then have a zip file with an exit in there. Um, yeah, that's the, that's the agenda, I would say. Sounds good. Yeah, like actually I think like, I just want to put this out there to everybody, you know, like points uh, three, four, and five, and maybe even, like maybe each one of these points is something you could actually do a whole stream over. Yeah. Uh, if you really wanted to go in depth with it, right, Panda, but it's like we want to just, we just want to, I think the important thing is just to show tonight, like, look, you can just throw some stuff together and get something that's working with all of these elements. And, you know, whether it's finished or not isn't the point, you can make a block, oh, this is done, I can export it, it works, and then you can change it later on, obviously. Yeah, so the goal should be, we have like a template that we will publish, 
and then people can take this and and play with it and um, like copy it and make uh, their own demo out of it basically so yeah so that's the the general idea so we have a template here if you want to do a demo get this and and make your effects so this is not about taste or concepts or um, like um, I don't know um, the content itself this is more like the structure like how how we set this up so it's not mm -hmm. about how how we like in an artist way uh, conceptualize our demos or how we approach like a look or something like this we just want to show like how to patch it in case and that's it and the content is uh, you have to come up with this yourself basically so. in panda from right about this like this template you're talking about right like you know if you're using the timer or the timeline and i think later on some ops like root trigger and stuff like that you could actually make a really simple template and then make some sub patches and you could use that to make Lots of different demos, right? Yeah, this is this is what I want to do. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Sure. Yeah. Let's see um, how long this takes. But I think we can do this in like two hours or something and have a have a have a decent setup. Um, yeah. Okay. So, so if you have questions, ask us. There's um, Steamor in the chat, and um, Mark or Andrew will also read it. Um, I will also try to read it, but I'm mostly patching probably. So yeah. if you have any questions about anything, just uh, just say so. Um, and yeah, so uh, what I want to say is about the content. So if you want to learn cable, so we won't do like a beginner's introduction or something. It will be more like advanced. You, sh you should be able to follow it, but it will not go into every detail. So we have a YouTube channel with over 100 videos now, Mark. Did you know this? Really? Have yeah. we hit? We we've gone past 100. <laughs> Holy shimoly. Oh, so, now the wasp and we were lagging behind. <laughs> so uh, there's a lot of content there, how to do stuff, how to do a tunnel effect, for example, how to do particle stuff. And there will be more. We are doing this every every week and uh, producing something new for this. And um, so if, if you want to learn how to make like effect or content stuff, go there and learn this. But you will have a basic understanding of it today, I'm, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Okay, um, so first point, what the fuck are demos? Um, so the, it's a long story um, what demos are and how they, how they started to be. I um, don't want to go into detail now, but in general nowadays um, it's an art form for real-time graphic um, People, so people that love real-time graphics um, and that maybe not focused on games, but also uh, also only on just like showing real-time stuff. Um, it's a, it's a huge community of people. Like there are a lot, a lot of old-school computers that are still uh, people are still active programming on them and just making demos for it. Um, then there's a lot of like PC demo scene stuff. There's also like maybe you heard of Shader Toy. Um, which is also uh, made by Demosina and um, people are creating those shaders there and many of them write shaders there and then they make four kilobyte executables out of them. So um, those, those are, this is another um, competition basically. So <laughs> I'm going all over the places, right? But yeah, so That's in the end, it. people go to those parties and they look like this, uh, not, not in Corona times. Um, but usually like, they look like this, this Evoke in Cologne, which the Cables team is also uh, part of the organizing team there. And um, people just submit their, their entries that they have done and then everybody watches them and everybody votes what they think was the best or the nicest or the most beautiful or the best programmed one. And then uh, uh, there's a prize given, everybody gets a prize. So um, basically, um, there are different competitions. For example, you have to uh, do something in four kilobytes or 64 kilobytes. Um, with cables, we are more um, focusing the demo competition. So there is basically not a really uh, um, restriction to it. Uh, you can you can submit the 500 megabyte demo. So we we try to keep it small, like 20 megabytes or something. So all of our demos are like 20 megabytes, and we try to still produce everything like generatively and not like prepare um, like bake everything in it so um, but that's totally fine so in the end you submit something that has 
that is somehow programmed or patched or something and that shows beautiful graphics and music, um, in the best case synchronized to the music um, and then everybody drinks beer and enjoys this. Um, and that's basically demo scene for me, Mark, what would you say? Well, um, I only actually joined a demo scene, I think, just over five years ago. Um, I've, I've not been around for a really long time. So to me, when I went to my first demo party, it was um, seeing real-time visuals with sound or music. That, that was the best way I can say it, on the big screen in a really <clears throat> friendly gathering of uh, people. And it was later on that I got more of an idea of the technology. So of course, demo scenes love to talk about this stuff, and it blew my mind that like uh, Pando said that uh, you know, people are still developing um, demos for the Commodore 64, which is still pushing what this really old piece of hardware can do, or the Amiga, or the Atari ST. Um, and to me, you know, a, a demo, of course, a demo is a very different thing for a lot of different people, but it's, it's when you're trying to either make something that's really visually um, and aesthetically pleasing, also with the music and sound, uh, that you, you're trying to make a complete thing. You're trying to push the technology as much as you can and also yourself. And then I think you've got the old school stuff, which is also doing that, but it has a lot more um, restrictions. And to me, the main reason to make a demo is just to have a reason to go to a party. You don't need one anyway, but you need, you need demos to have a demo party, right? You know, to sit down and enjoy uh, everything together. Um, my, my background is pretty much more 64 case with uh, Poo Brain. Um, so, you know, I'm really curious to see what Panda's going to do tonight with cables, because I mean, I've been using cables quite a while now, but I didn't make a demo of it. I just did some music for a demo. We, we did Panda. a demo together, man. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, and so if you, if you find this interesting right now, um, we have this shitty crisis, but this is also a chance because um, the parties are allowing allowing uh, like you can remote submit it so you don't have to go there uh, be there you can just submit something mm -hmm. um, and um, it will be shown uh, live on the internet on twitch or something um, so this is also a chance uh, if you if you want to try this out um, you can do it now without even going there but going there is actually like the, the best part um, the it's best, a really yeah. amazing community and um, yeah you should just go there um, yeah, um, so maybe we, we, will, we will provide some links in the YouTube video later, this will be uploaded to YouTube and then we put some, some links down there also like a more, better introduction and, and this kind of stuff um, we will try to put there. So, okay, um, I think that's it about the demo scene, I mean there's so much more but let's just, let's just keep it like this, right? Um, yeah, so actually... I uh, can show something um, one second. So if you want to see the the um, the cables demos again you can go to Poe um, which is this nice blue website that's blocked here. <laughs> I'm blocking myself so I can concentrate on work. I know. Um, so, so, so this is a, a, a big demo scene database and um, they have those uh, demo lists. So I made a list with all the demos that are made with cables um, and you can go here and, and uh, watch them if you want. And also you find them on YouTube on uh, our channel. There is a playlist which is called demos and there are also all the demos in there so you can you can look at them again there um, and find out uh, who made them yeah. um, okay so um, let me get the agenda again so um, general setup one, one thing I'd just like to say first, Panda, for, mm -hmm. my, for, for anybody that's not made a demo, the thing that was a real challenge for me at the beginning was like, how do you sync nice stuff? And that's something Panda's really going to cover in this, because normally a demo has visuals, audio and music, and you normally have scenes, just like a film, where you're going to want to switch from, like, say, scene A to scene B to scene C, and maybe you want to go back to scene A, but then with a different view or something like that. Um, that's normally the main problem a lot of people can tackle when they're starting to make a demo, and I think we're pretty much going to get that covered tonight with the general setup part, right? 
Pando? Yeah, I, I think um, like syncing to music, I think you can have a demo that's only a cube and if it's synced to the music in a great way, people will love it. So um, yeah. <laughs> like, syncing to music is basically like the most important thing, but probably. Um, yeah. So I want to cover that part because it's also, it's kind of, um, it's kind of automatically done. Mm -hmm. uh, in a way, uh, you can you can do it like that, um, and still it feels so alive and dynamic. So um, I think it's it's really it's also an easy thing to do. Basically, I, I think in cables. So um, yeah, I want to show this. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so I'm opening our demo mark. Ah, lovely. Uh, Text a bit, but um, so. Um, I want to show this because um, the setup is really, it's kind of readable. I mean, it's still yep. a mess, but it's not that messy That's than readable. other uh, projects. Um, so, um, so for the people that never seen cables, so this is our patching field there. We have like little operators that do stuff. And um, we have a timeline down here and um, I can now press play and I can um, scrub through the, through the demo. So I can just um, go here and, and see the whole demo and um, um, just scrub through it. And um, how is it with the sound? If it's, uh, if it's too loud, the music? Uh, I think, it, I think if you go to the output uh, oh, sound uh, combo and just put it on 0 0.35, that should be fine. Yeah, I muted it. The, the top was muted. So, ah, okay. Uh, so usually you, you hear sound, but I muted it. But I just want to show like the, um, the basic structure. So um, why is this so slow? But, yeah. um, so here we have our main loop and there are the whole rendering pipeline basically starts. Then we have a loading status like this can display like a loading bar. We will do this later and uh, prepare all the assets that they are loaded when, when the demo starts actually. Um, then we have this timed sequence here and another one down here. So this controls when which scene is played basically. I, I just want to show this really quickly and then go to uh, go into detail later. So. Right now, so I, I pressed F to see the flow mode. You see those are all inactive. So those little operators here are our scenes, basically. So this scene is called Koi Pond. Um, and so when I scrub the timeline, you see that um, other things are activated. So now the scene liquid is being rendered. And when I scrub here, you see ghosts are being rendered. So, um, so this thing basically decides which scenes to render. Um, this demo is a bit special. So for example, now you see both lines are active for a while because they are actually cross-fading. But this, yeah. is, this is a bit more advanced setup. We will not go into detail. Um, but yeah, so you can see it executing those sub-patches, we call them. So when I go in here, um, you see this is the actual effect in there. So there's a lot of stuff hidden in those little um, sub-patch pops, basically. I think, I think that's a good thing to say, Panda, is just for people that might not be so familiar with cables, you know, a sub-patch is just a collection of ops. Yeah, so instead like of having 5,000 on the screen, you can say, oh, I'm going to work on this scene and it's all good. And I'm going to tuck it into a sub patch because I'm pretty much done with it for now. And I'm going to jump back to the main um, level and then I'm going to carry on doing this again. So each of those sub patches that you see there is kind of an experiment. Right, Panda? Yeah. It's, it's a scene, basically. Yeah. And then in the end, the scenes uh, are drawn uh, on the screen, basically. So, um, so here we have like a little post-processing chain. It's, it's super small. We will do a bigger one in our demo, but in the end, this stuff is rendered into a texture and then we render this texture to the screen and put some effects on it. Um, and, and that's basically um, the basic setup for this thing. So the demo that we will do today will also have like, uh, like three or four scenes or something like this. 
and um, it will kind of look like the same. So here is the whole sound setup, but I don't want to show this. And here is um, in here is post processing and um, the overlays. Oops. Um, Um, yeah, I don't know why this is so laggy, but okay. Um, and yeah, here we have the post-processing stuff, but we will show that. So um, yeah, let's let's just start from zero and um, try to make a demo now. Yeah. And one other thing I want to say to everybody is, once again, I'm just assuming you need to demo. It's like that thing that you saw there from Panda could seem really complicated, but all those different scenes, you could just say. Uh, we're going we're gonna to see a cube for the first 30 seconds that's turning. And then we're going to see a rectangle turning for the next 30 seconds. It's the same concept. You're just switching what you're seeing on the screen, basically. Yeah. So don't let all those ops and cables intimidate you. you. You just start with something really simple and go out from there. Yeah. Yeah, this is one what we want to do now. So, um, so I will just create... Um, um, a new empty project, start from zero. Where the magic happens, the empty project. Yes, yeah, true. <laughs> so I will add a uh, main loop operator. Um, and then I will add a clear screen, a clear color, just, just to show that we are rendering something. Yeah. Um, and so now we will already add our timed sequence. So the time sequence is just like for programmers, it's like a switch case thing, basically. So it routes, it routes. Um, so those are the outputs that are executed. So I will just put something there, like a clear color. And I will just uh, put a few clear colors here. So for the people that aren't programmers, a uh, switch statement is kind of like a bunch of commands or instructions which happen under a certain condition. So you say, if this condition is true, switch and do this. So that's pretty much what uh, Panda is showing there, basically. Yeah, so so when I press F, you can see what's, what's actually happening. So it is only triggering this clear color here, which is, um, let's make it gray. Um, and when you click it and you see there is this parameter current, which is basically a current seam. So I can change this to one. And then you see this clear color is executed, so everything is green. And um, when I put in a two, then it's blue. Um, and yeah, I can, I can uh, put a three, and then it's our last one. Um, so I could actually connect an operator to this input port um, to control it. So, um, for example, it would be easy to control this with your mouse and go through all the, all the outputs with your mouse, but we, wanna, uh, we want to time it. We want to um, um, make an animation of this. So I can click here and say set animated. So now you see the, the port is grayed out a little bit and the timeline just opened. And um, so I can press play here and rewind and all this. Um, we don't see anything because we didn't create any keyframes. So um, now I can go again to my uh, current parameter here and I can just put in a one. And then you see it created a key where my cursor is. So this um, green line is my time cursor, basically, where we are in time. So when I go here and press 2, it will create another keyframe. And um, when I scrub the timeline, you see it changes from green, uh, from gray to green to blue. And when I press play or the space button, uh, the space key, then you see it's uh, it's just playing automatically, basically. So this is what an, our demo will do later. It will just automatically play from the beginning on. Um, so this is currently on linear interpolation, which we don't want, basically, because we just want to switch them. Um, so we can press uh, Control A and change the um, interpolation to absolute. So Control A is to select all of the keyframes, Yeah. 
Exactly. Right. Yeah. So, um, and then you 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 have a selection of different curves, and you can um, you can select those um, curves. So the timeline is like a little bit like the weak part of cables. <laughs> Um, we want to redo it and rewrite it, but we are not there yet. So um, yeah, um, but it's fine for for um, timing something something like a demo. It's it's totally fine. You don't want to keyframe like every effect. We will show how to do it without keyframes. Um, but um, yeah, so this is basically our timeline, and this is basically our scene setup. So we are switching between multiple scenes right now um, so let me add the last one here Andrew, how do you zoom in and out of the timeline um, um, just I'm with your mouse wheel i'm not seeing any keys that you're pressing now to move around or anything yeah. like that so when you right click it's like up here you can scroll okay and when you press the mouse wheel you can okay uh, zoom this and you can also this gray line here is like the the part that you're seeing. So when I make this smaller, then I see right. I zoom in okay. basically. So I can also zoom in like this. Okay. Um, and when you double click it, you see uh, your whole project. Basically. Everybody now knows how often I use the timeline. <laughs> um, okay. So um, um, if you guys have any questions, just just let us know. Otherwise, we will just continue. And um, I think I will just put in some music now, and then we can uh, keyframe our first um, thing. But we're going to need a cube or two in there as well, Thunder. What? We're going to need a cube or two in there. Yeah, yeah. Let, let's do this. Um, <laughs> let's do this later. I mean, we can. We we we'll just um, yeah. Let's do it later. Um, I'm, just, I'm just hyped for the cube. That's all. <laughs> okay, let's just put in one there. Yes. And then we know we end at the next scene for sure. Yeah, all right. Um, so one handy thing um, to know is um, you can, so if you use cables a lot, or if you use cables before, you probably know about the timer off. So this gives you uh, like a time since we loaded this patch, right? But it is not, it does not react to the timeline basically, but we have um, timeline time, and this gives us the current time of the timeline. So when I scrub in the timeline, you see this number is changing basically. So um, let me rotate it a bit faster. So when I press play, you see the cube is moving. Yeah. Or when I'm scrubbing, the cube is moving, and if not, then not. And at this time, it will always be this value, basically. So, yeah. um, so you can you can say, okay, maybe. So we are at 1.5 seconds. So you want to have the cube, like, um, perfectly uh, perpendicular to the camera. Uh, oops. Then you maybe just want to add something to this value. So, um, so like this. So now you're sure, like this is still moving, um, but you're sure that at 1.5 it's totally parallel to the camera, basically. So, um, so you can use this time to synchronize stuff, to, basically. Um, yeah, so let's load a music. So I will use um, a track from our demo Moron um, from from Ronnie, who is also um, a really cool YouTube channel, I will just post it here. Um, and he made the music for the Moron demo. So to import an asset or a file to, um, to cables, you just drag it into the window. So I would just drag an MP3 file here and um, release the mouse so now it's um, uploading this file so now you see we have an mp3 file here so this is how you basically uh, import images or music files uh, to your patch 
And just in case you missed it, everybody, you've got two views there, patch files, which are the patches you've uploaded, and library files, which are the ones that you've got already inside of cables. Yeah, so here are some example images, basically. Yeah. Um, so usually, uh, yeah, let's, let's take a look. Okay, um, let's, let's make some music. So um, we need an um, audio buffer for, for playing music. So there are like multiple solutions in cables on how to play music because um, in the web there's like multiple ways to do this and um, for making demos this audio buffer way, this the WebGL way, basic, uh, the, the web audio way is basically the best way to make visuals that are synchronized, that are playing at the same time because it's, it's critical that we are at the same time as the audio. So we use this audio buffer and we use an uh, audio buffer player operator and we use an output. And this seems complicated and we need to make this easier, but um, you can just copy and paste this from, from our template that we that we will publish later. So this is this will be our template. And you've also got the example patches for all the ops that you see there. They've already got like um, setups that you can just copy. Yeah. So now I click the audio buffer and um, I can select a URL or file here. So I select our MP3 file. And um, now I can um, press this to start it. Yeah, and now we should hear it. So I will make this not so loud. I hope this is okay. I think 0 0.2 will be fine, yeah. Okay. And um, now the audio is playing, but um, it's not connected to what we are doing here. So we need to connect it to the timeline. So we have this operator called timeline controls. And this I can connect. Uh, this has an output like play stop or time. And this thing basically means this thing is controlled by the timeline. So I can connect play, play pause to uh, start stop to this start stop point, uh, port and connect this. This is basically the, the time, like timeline time. We connect this to the offset port. And now when I press space or press play, um, you hear audio playing. So. I think um, we might sign it up a bit. Yeah, it's, it's really silent in the beginning. Oh, so, okay. So now you should hear. Can you all hear the music? Oh, yeah, there it is. Okay. Um, so, so now it's synchronized to the timeline. So when I press play here, it's always the same. So we are repeating. Can repeat this, and at that time, it's always the same time in the audio, basically. And um, Panda, I think you can put the volume at like 0 0.1, unless anybody says it's uh, too quiet. I don't. I nearly don't hear it anymore. Oh, then if you, well, you need to hear it then. I was just checking it back on the stream, but uh, I'll keep an eye on the stream if people say it's too loud or too quiet. No okay. Um, yeah. So now we can press play. And, um, and hear the music. So let's go to the beginning. So the demo, uh, the, the music, there is some intro music which is going on for a long time. So I would say we just delete all the keyframes we did and we would just start the demo when the music starts. So we would just listen to it. So there the music is starting. So roughly here it was. So I would just put a keyframe here. So now we listen again. That's, it's nearly okay, so let's try it. It's already quite good. So usually you have to 
have to move this keyframe left to right to just get the, the perfect moment. So, um, but this is okay. So basically, we can now, like our gray clear screen could be the, in, the intro of the, of the whole demo. Um, so we can display, I don't know, credits there or, or some introduction or like fading in um, slowly and then when the music starts, uh, the demo will start. I'd just like to say a little something here for people, you know, what you see here, the Panda setup, this is your template for making a demo. You've got some music from somebody or you, if, if you don't have music from somebody, we've got MP3s in the library files that you can just use to make something, uh, to get the hang of it. And this is all you need, like your timeline time where you are and a way to swap between patches and all those color color ups that you see there, they represent anything. It could be a sub patch, it could be an entire 3D scene. Now, this is actually just your template to make a basic demo. It doesn't get more complicated than this. Um, yeah, so um, so let's let's make this intro a bit better somehow. Um, so maybe we want to fade in from black to uh, to gray to, uh, to or to the green color we have uh, where the cube is. So we could either go here and um, keyframe our color values. But we can also do it different without keyframes. We can just say um, timeline time. So this also returns the time on the timeline now. So when we go back to the beginning, it's just zero. And when we press play, um, it just increases. So uh, we could connect this to our RGB channels from the clear color. So then. It would just fade in, like after one second, the screen would be white. Um, but we we want to have it much slower, so we can use the map range, which is super handy for for timing stuff without keyframes, basically. So I can say something like mm, from 10 seconds to 14 seconds. I want this value to go from zero to one. So now when I press play, you see it's black all the time until we hit uh, 10 seconds. And then it will fade into white in four seconds. So I actually want to synchronize this on this effect. So this is roughly starting at 14.2. I don't know, to 18, let's try it. And I can now also say, I can press those keys, um, B to begin and M to end. I have to try this again. So now you see this gray area here. When I press play now, it will only, will always play in this area. And when we reach the end, it will just go there again. So you can say, um, Let's go to 14 here. So maybe to 18, yeah. So, um, so you can, if you synchronize stuff like two instruments or something, you can just this and, and loop over this time frame and actually synchronize stuff or fine-tune stuff. So to remove this, I press uh, B again twice and then it's gone again. Now it will play in the whole range actually. So maybe we will do like a little um, we will just display a little circle or something, or Mark, do you have a better idea? Are you still there? Yeah, I'm here. Yeah. 
Yeah, I'm just playing around because I just realized uh, with our audio setup that we've got right now, I'm not hearing the music. I can only hear it via the Twitch. Oh, but then okay. it's uh, six, seven seconds of lag. <laughs> um, can I? Yeah, I've just, I've just been trying to figure out how to get the audio from your computer without um, disturbing you over there. I'm not there yet, but don't mind me. You just carry on. I'm, I'm still listening to everything and uh, I can see it all. It's no problem. Um, mm -hmm. Let me try this. Um, can you hear it now? No. Okay, one more. I need to press apply. No, it's really strange because I've got here with the uh, play computer sounds and music, but I'm not hearing it. I, I, don't worry about it. I'm okay. It's no problem. Okay. Um, so um, I want to let this circle grow basically until the the scene starts. So I will add another map range. Um, and connect it to time and time and go from, I don't know, where are we to, uh, like 17, one little finger when I just um, say, um, uh, by the way, Panda, I think something that just got changed with audio, I'm, I'm hearing maybe I'm quieter. Uh, can anybody on Switch just confirm if I'm audible, if I can be heard? Oh. Can you hear my guy? Testing one, two, three, test, test. Okay, a minute, let's give it a minute to get to the interweb and back. Test one, two, test one, two. Can everybody on the channel hear me? Steamer, Steamer is saying uh, I became really quiet once you tried this second thing. Yeah, why did I touch it? I don't know. <laughs> um, okay, okay, let's just try this. Uh, yeah, because I don't hold it. Test one, two. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm not audible on the stream almost. Uh, I'm, I'm turning you up. Test now. Test one, two. Test one, two. Now you're on max. I hope this is fine. I think I'm still pretty quiet. Okay. Um, okay, hold it. Uh, all right. One minute. I'll just take a look. Uh, I'm taking a look as well. Hey, 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 hey. Um, Panda, can I just say Yeah, yeah, do it. Sorry, everybody, technical difficulties, just give me a moment. <laughs> I might be a little bit noisy now, but hopefully I'm going to be um, louder. Test one, two, test one, two. Hey, hey, hey. Test, test, test. Yeah, I'm still the same, I think. All right, I think I've got it. Yeah, okay. Yay, all right. Okay. Um, cool. All right, there we go. A releasing control. Yeah. Um, yeah, okay, I hope it's fine that you don't hear the sound. It's just, the setup is crazy um, um, that we have here, but yeah. All right, I'm, I'm pretty sure this is good now, no worries. Okay, so um, I just I just created this circle here so it grows until we um, hit the uh, first scene so um, I, I want to just make it a bit bigger um, and there's just one little thing I want to say to everybody because like I, I didn't understand how amazing the map range up and I wasn't so fun to really give you a couple of explanations with it. One thing I want to just say is like, you know, it, 
you know, it ignores values outside of the old men and the old max, right? So like if Panda puts in like old men is 15 and old max are like they're 17 and 28, you know, anything below 17 and anything above 28 gets ignored. Um, and it's just, you can basically use multiple map ranges after each other and create entire things, um, sequences of events. It's a really good op. We've also got a tutorial about it on YouTube. Definitely worth checking out. Um, yeah. Um, so I would say we have like a little introduction, intro scene yeah. uh, for the start. So I will just create a sub patch for this. So it doesn't come in my way uh, all the time that we will work on this. So I will just select all those operators and I can click here, create sub patch. So they are all hidden away in this um, in this operator here. So I can double click this and then I'm back um, and see uh, what I did before. Um, and it's still rendering basically. So everything is just hidden away. And we, we can just go here and say, let's call this intro. Yep. Um, so now we tuck this away in a sub patch. And also if you want to go in, in one sub patch, you don't really have to scroll here. So here is now always a list. Uh, you can click this and then you are in the intro um, sub patch. So basically we will create a sub patch for all the scenes that we we will do so um yeah let's just create just let's just create some scenes so yeah. normally when we do a demo like everyone uh, that's working on the visuals is just creating patches from zero like not not like this but like just creating patches um like you can see on cables so um, um uh, 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 I wanted to use the one from Chana. Let's see it right now. Um, ah, I think it got pushed out of the uh, top of the month. Today, right? Yeah, today. Yeah, today. Or something. Um, so I asked her. I, I'm allowed to use this. All right. Um, so. Um, so imagine she was working with us on the demo and um, everybody is just building stuff and we in, in the end we just copy things over to our demo patch when we are happy with like basic um, our, our basic effects or something so I want to show you something from um, our um, revision demo um, where we um, so I created visuals basically and then gave them to Uncle X um, who was like the, the um, producer or like the like he, he decided the, the look of the demo in the end so um, so we talked about what what scenes we can we could have in the demo and uh, one idea was let's just let's do some old-school lasers and synchronize them to the music so we didn't have a demo patch yet, um, and we just created patches. I don't know why machine is so slow. We created patches uh, from zero. So this is basically uh, the laser patch that you maybe saw in the demo earlier. Um, right here, it's not it's not animated. It's animated when I press play, and. Um, um, I just built this scene and then we took it and put it in our demo patch and then we animated there and put post processing and more effects on top of it uh, in the demo patch. But this is just our effect, basically how it looks before it is going through the whole post processing. So it looks totally different. Oh, um, no, just a quick question. Yeah. Um, so now you say people are working on separate patches, right? So a minute ago at the beginning, you showed like um, the timeline time, you know, controlling some parameters. Yeah. Is there a way that if people have worked in two or three patches and they've made keyframes and things like that, they're obviously doing it in their own timeline to kind of like be able to paste that together or is that problematic? Uh, it's problematic. Um, you can copy keyframes, but you can only copy keyframes from one parameter basically. So I would just do the 
um, the keyframing in there. I mean, maybe synchronize to FFT or something. Yeah, it okay. would be easier. And then copy it over there. So another example I want to show is um, this thing. So we wanted, for the demo, we wanted uh, kind of like old school retro CRT stuff next to the lasers. So um, it, it, we wanted something that looks like an interlaced display or something. Um, and st still loading. So, um, so I created this patch and this is already quite big. Um, and this has, this is just pure chaos, ignore me, I, I'm sorry for this, but I just want to show, I can click my mouse here and I can go through different presets that we created. Um, so we have this circle thing here and we have those lines and I click again and we have all those little animations here. Um, and I can just go through them and look at them and, and that's basically it. We just copy all this stuff over then in the end and synchronize and time it um, and then it's not interactive anymore and then we just um, synchronize it to musical instruments or something um, to lay over the demo. And you see this, this, there's stuff in there like the Logicoma logo we just did out of fanboyism I guess. Uh, we don't put it in the demo, we just played around with it or like this horrible thing. <laughs> we decided it's too cheesy, let's not do it and put it in the demo, but this is just um, basically prototyping and trying stuff out uh, what we want to put in the demo um, and we just do this in those um, extra patches that we do and then we copy them over to the final thing and, and put some final post-processing over there yeah I mean that's kind of an art form for everybody, you know, knowing how to like copy a patch over. I mean, if I'm correct here, Panda, like this patch from Tuna, you see there's a main loop there, and it's a big thing you should remember. You can only have one loop, uh, one main loop in your patch. So if you ever copy everything over, I did this at the beginning with cables, and you copy a main loop, you know, cables doesn't know like which one should probably be drawn first. This can cause problems. This is why it's always good to do stuff with a sequence up. Yeah. Uh, so just copy everything now uh, below that main loop and paste it in and it should work. Yeah, exactly. So this is what we're going to do. Um, I would just copy all of this um, from the sequence up down. Uh, I mean, we can have a quick look at it. So basically this is um, all generating images. So the, the shading here is generated uh, with simple 2D image blends basically um, and then used as a matcap material and then it renders uh, the color into a texture and to get this nice glass uh, refraction looking effect it renders it into a black and white map uh, which is totally not physically correct, but uh, who cares? Looks cool. <laughs> and then we have the de uh, the, the background um, font, and then we have some post processing. So both of the um, uh, images that are generated are combined uh, into multiple maps, and then they are all put together here. Um, so yeah, but that's totally not important to our demo to know how this works. This is a different topic, but I can just go here and um, press Control C and copy all those operators um, and just leave this patch and go into our patch. And um, I will just disconnect the cube for a while and I will just paste it here. So usually this way faster, but I don't know OBS is taking all my CPU away. So now I pasted it in here and now I will connect it um, to uh, our second scene. So now when I uh, play again, you see, um, we see this torus now. So. now Can I just say it? Yeah. Say a little something about it? 
So uh, for everybody that just thinks like, oh, why did it just skip and pause there um, the first time? If I'm correct, um, it's you, you need. To, it's a good idea with like the loading up. It's a little bit deep now, but I just want to touch it. Yeah. Uh, you use the loading status up that when a patch loads, you want to like send out one trigger to all of your scenes. Basically, it's like an initialization, and then cables is ready. Um, to render this stuff. So you saw when Panda went back there and then press play again, it was super smooth. I think he's going to cover this later. Yeah. But if you're just wondering why it paused for a moment, that's why. We'll get to that in a bit. Yeah, so this is basically a um, performance um, problem that we, we have. So everything was just initializing the mesh and the shaders and, and the image compose renderers and all this stuff was just being... Um, Initialized, so this was why it was stuttering, and also my machine is kind of struggling with the stream, I guess. So, so now we have our second scene here, and I will again just select all of this and click create sub patch. And um, so we tucked it uh, away again into a new sub patch, and um, we will just call this donut. And um, yeah, so we can just play it again and we see it. And there's the donut. So let's listen to the music a bit and let's decide where our next scene is. So maybe it starts there already. So. Let's just do it here. And do we have, because I've never done much trailer with audio before in cables, um, do we have a way of like getting the BPM from an artist and then being able to know what like a downbeat is on the timeline with the amount of frames? Uh, no. Okay. That's an idea for an art. Yeah. So. <laughs> Also, this is an idea to make the, the timeline much better. It's, right now, it's it's working with frames and seconds, um, but you actually we also want beats in there. So uh, the timeline will be like there will be a lot of improvements. But before that, we have to do some other stuff sure. that's more important to us now. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, we can we can get this BPM from the from the MIDI file. I want to do soon. Um, so. Um, so for our other scene, I thought we use your tunnel. Um, so Mark did this um, tunnel animation in a copycat video, I think. Uh, so you can find a tutorial on YouTube um, from Mark, which shows like how to build this tunnel here. So tunnel is always good in demo. So. <laughs> Just as good as on key. <laughs> so I want to copy this scene over. So again, I'm I'm looking here. So there's a camera in there um, where you can see how it is made and, and all this stuff. So I don't want this actually. Uh, so I hope I can just skip it. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I, I don't need all this stuff up here. So it all starts at this sequence up. So I would just copy this. Um, I would just select everything here. And I don't care what actually does I just want to copy this and and if you copy published patches on cables please please ask the creators uh, if you're allowed to use it um, that's always important so now I will connect it again to our um, time sequence op and there you see it so here we have our demo and after that, the tunnel starts. So again, I just want to select all of this and create a sub patch and move it here. And let's call it tunnel. So. Yeah, so this is basically the setup. Um, oops, how we um, oh, how we create uh, a basic setup for a demo in cables. 
packages quickly reloaded. And um, so a lot of times we change the effects and, and have to replace them. So at one point you basically have to decide if you want to replace it again and copy paste it over again or if you use it in this patch. We don't have like a reference to an effect or something right now. But um, yeah, so at one point you just do it all in this patch basically. So, um, so the next step would be we want to create um, some post-processing. Um, so basically, we want to um, use those those textures, those those images that we create, and we want to apply some two-dimensional effects on it. So, but we don't want this only for the tunnel or only for the donut. That's basically what we're doing in, in the sub patch here. We had this uh, image treatment and the, the image compose, uh, the post-processing stuff here. But we also want to do this for everything that's down here. So we can render all this to a texture again. So I will create a, a render to texture here. Under, do any of those sub patches already have a render to texture working on them? Yeah, a lot of. Yeah, okay. Um, so the donut. I forgot to look at my own channel, by the way. So yeah, they, they have a lot, lots of render to textures in there. Okay. Um, but I also want to like render everything that's happening there into another texture. So. Okay. So now you don't see any output anymore because we are all rendering it to the texture and not to the to the final canvas. Um, so we, I would just create a basic um, setup for post processing. I think we have a lot of tutorials. Yeah, we've got a, we've got two or three um, post processing tutorials on YouTube. So I will create a full screen rectangle, and. Um, So basically what I'm doing is like set up a chain where I can use this image that we have and apply effects on it. So, so now I have an image compose. So everything I do below this image compose I know why this is so annoying. Sorry, wait a second. Yeah, there we go. Um, so, so now we can modify this image. So, for example, I can just um, we have a lot of two D effects in canvas. I can just uh, uh, add a color, and um, this color is now applied on top of the image. So I can select blend modes. Um, like you do in Photoshop, for example, and I can select um, a lot of different blend modes to just get the look I'm I'm after. And um, I can also um, use other effects like uh, like a blur to blur the whole image. Um, and maybe we want to create a glow later, but actually, like the tunnel already has a glow, right? Yeah. Um, but um, um, Maybe just use brightness and contrast for now, just to kind of keep it simple. Yeah, let's just add a little bit of, um, of brightness. Yeah, I want something that you see um, edge okay. detection. Then. That's the obvious one. You can add. <laughs> yeah, you just yeah, so let's do just a little. Show, bit. Let's just show some effects. So you also have stuff like edge detection, and then you see um, everything. Um, that's being rendered is going through the edge detection. So even um, let me set this length of the demo. Um, so even the tunnel uh, is now edge detected, or the circle in the beginning is just the circle now because we added this edge detection here. So I can turn this down and um, 
and then you see the tunnel again and then you see the donut again it doesn't help with the donut but yeah so you see we are applying this post processing on everything that's rendered out here so um, maybe we will just change um, and make I think it it's really the post processing Pardon? I think it'd be really easy to just get rid of the post processing at least in the tunnel patch yeah 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 um, I just want to make the background a bit brighter. So, um, so for example, I can just add uh, a vignette. So you see, we make the borders darker. Yeah. Um, just add some some effects on there. Um, or we can add some chromatic aberration, for example, so it looks a bit more analog. Um, and the borders, but I actually don't want this right now. But this, there you can go wild. You can just uh, create a whole post-processing chain. And there, there are a lot of tutorials that are covering this, like what effects we have. Um, we can just, we can just add them here. So, but I oh, want. Well, yeah. I'd just like to say this to everybody. So the time sequence set up there of Panda, right? You know where he's swapping between different scenes. You could do this with post-processing too. So you could set up like two or three or four um, effect chains, if incorrect, right, Panda? And you could also make those swap at certain times of the, the, the timeline, right? Yeah, yeah, totally, um, totally. We want to use um, the audio to control uh, some effects uh, later, yeah. I think. Um, but yeah, you can you could just keyframe then or use, use the, the map range to adjust those parameters. Also, what I like to do is this, like, if you want, for example, to um, fade between um, two scenes with the, with the black uh, screen in between, you can just adjust this, uh, like, time this amount of this color and then change the, the scene behind this color. And then you have, like, a smooth transition to another scene. Um, yeah, so maybe let's do some blur, um, on, uh, some glow on top of it. So I will create another image compose. And we also have a tutorial with this on how to add balloon glow. It's like three minutes and then you're going to be the envy of the demo scene. Um, so this is my... Uh, my image that I want to use. Um, so this should be a blurred, glowy thing in the end. So I will just add some blur and I will add, um, um, there was Luma key, Luma key operator. So um, let me show this without the blur. So I can now um, select like a color range. So if it's one, then it only shows you like the white parts of the image. So I can cover a bit down and then we also have the brightest colorful parts in there. Um, and this is basically one I want to blur to get a nice glow. So I will just use fast blur. Um, like this and make the resolution way smaller. So this blurred image, I want to put over my final result. So I can go here and add another draw image. And then I can plug this over here. And then now we see this. So to mix those both together, I can just change the amount here, but I can also change the blend mode again. So I want to put this blend mode on screen. So only the bright parts um, are added on top of the original image. So I don't know if you see this on the stream, but now there is some, yeah, glow, cool. some glow around it. So if I, if I disable it, so I can click an operator and press Shift D to enable or disable this. And then you can see like the difference that is happening. So there is some glow now. Um, yeah, so in, in this way you can just add effects on top of your um, of your uh, final final image basically so um, 
So those three chains here, branches, are basically our post-processing setup. So I want to also tuck this away. Um, so I can just create another sequence. So the sequence allows us to control like what is executed first. So basically it's always from left to right and from up to down in cables. So those, this is executed first and then this is executed and then it's finally drawn on the screen. So the full screen rectangle here is basically our final result. So I just want to put this away because I want this patch to be clean in the end. So I create another sub patch and I would just call this um, post pro. So now you see the image goes into the sub patch, and when I go in here, um, it's, it's just being rooted into the sub patch, um, the inputs that we have. Yeah, so. Um, so I'm sa I'm saving all the time. By the way, when you see this, I'm I'm saving the patch. Um, you should always always save it, and um, and also create backups when you're working on a demo. You can also go to patch settings, and um, you can go to versions, and you can load an old version from yesterday or something in there if you if you fuck something up or something is bad or something you want an old state. You can go there and load an, an old version, but you can also always say save as and save it as a backup then. Um, so, uh, Bando, just one little thing I want to um, say, because I think it's a really cool feature with Cable. So, you know, you could, you could make like five or six patches and they're all different things. Um, the uh, Panda, if you go back to the patch settings, just the thing with giving, um, oh, I'm forgetting it, and uh, the project uh, namespace. Namespace is a really handy one. Um, so yeah. you could call it like um, evoke um, demo 2020, and if you would give that namespace to all of your separate patches, you can later on in cables and filter everything. So instead of typing a big long name in the namespace, is a great way to bunch some of your patches together so you can find them easily. Yeah, you can basically create like collection of patches. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, so, do you have anything to add, Mark? Do you have any anything before um, we go to the FFT stuff? No, I mean, I think you've pretty much covered that. Like, we've got sub patches there. We've showed how you can just in 10 seconds copy and paste something from one patch um, into another. Um, with the post processing, I, I would have, I don't know, but that's just me. Can, can, so, I'm just curious here right now, Panda. Like, can you have more than one full screen rectangle in a patch? And if you disable the trigger on one, that the other one is automatically visible? You know what I mean? If you'd have like two of those like post-processing chains and you'd be doing something like with a time sequence, they, they wouldn't overlap each other with the full screen rectangle, right? No, you can do that, yeah. Okay, right, okay, yeah. sure. Yeah, that was just a little thing that came up in me while I was uh, looking at it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, sure. you can you can basically switch um both things. You can also um so what we also do uh a lot is we have multiple time sequences, like one for the background and one for the foreground. So for example, if I go here and create another one and um, just, I don't know, add some simple meshes here. Um, ah, it's, yeah. So. yeah. Um, right. You can see um, the rectangle frame here, or um, at zero you see the circle. Yeah. Um, and this is actually quite cool, this setup with one, so I could just cycle through them, through all yeah. those shapes and, and position them, and they are like the overlay stuff. Yeah. And um, and we, we want to do this later with the... Um, MIDI um, input from our okay. sound. So, 
Um, yeah, but you, you can have multiple of them. You can have, you can layer multiple uh, full screen rectangles uh, over each other. Um, it's all no problem. So where I connect with this, there's an output here which says uh, trigger always. So um, this thing here is now always triggered. So those are triggered by the value that you input here. Um, but this one is always triggered after everything else is rendered. Um, so we are always sure that the, that those overlays basically are rendered um, after the background is rendered. Um, oh, that's a great thing to show as well, yeah. That you can just do this. Yeah, let's, let's just make it white and that's it. Um, yeah, so... Um, yeah, I think that's the post-processing part, or like this is basically like the super basic setup on yep. how to make a demo. And um, we saw keyframing and this map range stuff is pretty hard, or like it's it's a lot of work to do. So we want to look at uh, audio analysis to uh, synchronize our demo or to just control effects with the data of the audio. I will just delete this cube, sorry. Sorry, cube. Um, sorry. <laughs> um, so, um, I know that was the audio setup, right? No, no, audio setup to the right. Uh, see now? Uh, there, there you go. go. <laughs> so that's our audio setup. Maybe we also put it in, in the sub patch later. Yeah. It's a good um, way to show it. How you can use one or two variables as well to just send data out of one sub patch to another, maybe. Yeah, maybe. So, yeah, uh, let's do this when we when we have the setup. So, um, so we want basically control values or like get information from the from the audio, like how loud is it right now, or like uh, what are the different frequencies, how how loud are. The, is the music and and filter this um, and for this we have uh, some operators one is called um, audio analyzer and um, this one takes the audio uh, signal basically in and you also have to connect it uh, to the renderer and um, so when I play this, you see here it outputs uh, already the average volume of the music right now. So this is already quite handy. So I can I can take this um, and oh, where do I put it? Maybe just to the size of the rectangle frame. Yeah. I will so, I will so. create a scale um, of and um, plug it in here before the, the overlap stuff. So when I press play, um, it's quite hard to see because the tunnel is so bright in the middle. Um, Maybe just turn the brightness down on the post-processing. Yeah, let's just add a number there. So now you see the rectangle is shaking to the music already. It's already Quite well. Um, so, when so I, yeah. sorry, sorry. No, it's fine. I just want to say to people if you're not experienced with audio and the uh, output from Audio Analyzer, you can use a cool little op called um, Smooth. And basically, it allows you to smooth out jumps in data because you know everybody's got different music. It could jump up really quickly and jump down really quickly. And with the smooth up, you can it's like a transient of like a drone sound. You can decide how long it takes to go up when it's smoothing out and how long it takes to smooth down. So if you imagine something like a drum being hit, like a bats sound, you know, at the beginning it's really loud, it's very fast, and then later on it like fades out. And smooth up is a really great way to just control jittery data, data that jumps around a lot. Um, yeah, but not really in this case. Oh, it looks pretty good. But, I mean, it's pretty full to track, that's the problem. It worked probably better yeah. at the intro. Um, yeah, so... So you can you can use this for a lot of things. You can also um, add 
transform and um, use this for um, for rotation. Uh, got disconnected from the scale. Okay. So I can control the rotation. The audio is also pretty interesting. Or like do both at the same time. So yeah, this is, this is okay. And the one little thing I want to say, uh, which I think is also really cool, we've got this up called um, Threshold. So what that means is you get something like the average volume and you, you put a threshold, like say 0 0.7, depending on the audio. And when that threshold is crossed, it will send out one trigger. And you can use that trigger with a lot of different things like the bang or, or something like that. So you can make like something only happen when a certain volume threshold is um, crossed. Yeah. There's a lot of things you can do uh, with this basically. Um, exactly, and we have um, we have another. Um, so the audio analyzer is not the only one. We also have um, um, FFT area average, um, but I would just show the example patch with this. So in in Canvas you can go click any op and you can click view documentation or view example, and view documentation always brings you to a site like this. Where you get like more or less a description of what the operator does, and hopefully in most cases we, we try to do this all the time to create like little examples um, for those operators. So this is probably way too long. I'll just do it quick before it kicks in. <laughs> so here you can change. spectrum there so the left is bass and it goes bass bass mid mid high so the left side is the bass right high is the high uh, right side is the high so that little rectangle that panda's putting there uh, that allows you to sample a piece of the frequency spectrum basically yeah and so, the bigger you make it like basically like so the result you get here that that line that you see is like the average value of what is in this rectangle so if I make it pretty small, uh, then you see it's it's super fast, like it's changing super fast. And if I make this bigger, then it's it's quite smooth because the average is is not that. Well, one little thing I want to say here is like so if if Panda would want to get the base right just for the kick, you'd make the width not so wide. You'd move it all the way to the left, okay. right, and then you'd. Move high max and you'd probably move it up a bit and now you'd only be uh, it would only be responding to the bass kick basically and just this little shape that he's got there you could now make two or three copies of that and you could have it respond to the bass the snare and a hi-hat for example yeah. yeah yeah you can have multiple of those and um um and use them to analyze the audio um so i'm not sure if we should do this right now uh, we can let, let's let's try it. So I will remove the um, average volume that we used before, and we'll just connect it to FFT area average. And um, this one has another input, um, FFT array. So the audio analyzer outputs an array uh, with um, with those values, that, like the frequencies that we just saw, all those little bars. Um, this is in this array, and we can use this in the FFT average area um, to analyze them. So, so this is why I had this zoom here. So when I click this up, you see this little graphic again that we saw before in this example. So when I press um, um, play again, I'm muted. <laughs> Um, you see it's already uh, looking quite good. So when I click this off, you see this, this thing again. So I can go here and um, make this a little bit bigger. So with this base, uh, Panda, you basically want to um, 
move it a little bit to the right with X because that's shut shut face. Yeah, and then you get X and you move it a bit to the right because like sub bass is really slow. Yeah, that, that's your kick basically. Yeah, so you can you can try to find this very much depending on the music, like how how the music is basically. So we most of the time only use this for like stroboscope effects or something. So um, I basically oh no I tucked it away. So so I want to use this value here now for uh, make a stroboscope effect. So. Um, I just do this. I will just connect this to our post pro sub patch. So I have the value in here, so I can use this and just add uh, color on top just, of everything. Just in case it went a little bit faster, people that aren't used to this, um, the sub patches they have a port called a dynamic port. So if you pull like a trigger or a number or a, a, just a different kind of um, data connection there and you let go, it will create that input port type, and then it will create an input port inside of the sub patch. Yeah, so, um, yeah, so I rooted this, this number that we get from the, from the uh, FFT into the sub patch. You can also use uh, variables um, to send something without the, the cable here, because this cable is already annoying. Um, maybe we just do this. Let's do this. So this is one way to get a value in there, but it's a bit messy because maybe this value we want to use in all the sub patches later. So we can send this uh, value there in another way. We can create a variable. So I can say var set number and um, call this, I don't know, base, FFT. Yeah, FFT base, yeah. So like this and um, so this number goes into a variable and we can create an operator var get number to get a value from a variable back. So I can here select FFT base and when I press uh, play again, then you see we have this number here, but we don't have the cable because we don't want like 20 connections later from this uh, FFT op to all our sub patches and, and a lot of ops, we just don't want that many cables in this case because it's cleaner without. So I just copy this var get number and go into our post processing and just connect it to the amount of this color op. So when I play it, you see this flashing of the screen to the base. So. Uh, I'm glad you see it more, more trusty. So, so this is probably too bright right now, but in general, like this is quite like helping to make the demo alive, like because it's already reacting to the music and it's just working. I don't know. This adds so much to the demo. I mean, we probably it's a bit too bright, so let's. Uh, multiply this down to like 0 0.6 or something so it's that just a little bit you could also um, like that. I'd, I'd use the threshold up with this and bang but that's me you know, that's my patching style yeah th this I want to use with the MIDI stuff basically so okay. this is for me just like we get some value and use it and the MIDI stuff is more like you get like a trigger, like a bang and then you use it then. Um, so do we have any questions or anything? It's, it's really quiet. I think you've got the whole <laughs> audience captivated, uh, Panda. Pan? And you've got them captivated. It's uh, very quiet over there. It, is everybody still in the stream? Or is it, did it just drop out and uh, we don't know? <laughs> oh, there we go. <laughs> oh, everybody's still there. Okay. Okay. Um, so, 
Uh, another method uh, to get like information about the, the audio track is that you create a MIDI file. So um, you know those old MIDI music files that you can hear that sounds really crappy. Um, they are really good for something because they are just the data which instrument is played when and you just don't want to play it but you just want to read those information like when is which instrument playing basically. Um, so I prepared something. Um, we can... I wanted to build this whole thing but um, I would just show it uh, like this. Sorry, it's so um, we can go into the patch and um, let me show it quickly. I can upload a MIDI file here. So um, I have my file manager and I can just drag a, a MIDI file into here and then I can, um, so it's automatically converted. So I uploaded this MIDI file and now we have a MIDI 8 mid.json file. So this it contains like the information like when, which instrument is being played and all this stuff. There's also like the PPM in there and a lot of metadata uh, that you could use. So, but I want to use this. Uh, MIDI file. So, so I prepared a patch to show how this looks. Um, basically, you get a list of tracks uh, with instruments in them. So, um, so Ronnie named them like this. So we know what's what's in the different tracks. So, ah, I got some multi. All right, sorry, got stuck on so that. So when I press play. You can see the different effects of uh, the different instruments, like how long they play, and they grow as long as they are played. So, and down here, the B2, this is like the, the note name, basically. Is we can we can use this information and maybe synchronize something to a snare uh, or to a bass drum or, or whatever to a hi hat and then we can then we have an exact timing and not something that's analyzed after the audio is played basically. Um, so uh, just one little thing I want to say for people that don't have any musical background or they're not familiar with MIDI. That the easy way to think about MIDI is it's like you've got a piano keyboard in front of you, right? So if you can press a key in, you know, it's on. You let go of it, it's off. That's like a zero or one. That's the first thing you can do with it. You have velocity, which like is how loud is the, the note that you've pressed in. It's a number between zero and 127. So if you press it in really gently, it's low. Like 10, if you press it really hard, it's 120. And, you know, um, when you let go of the note, that's this no off and that information is all you need to do amazing things just want to say that one for the people that don't know midi yeah um yeah so um let's try it um yeah. so i can now create um an operator that is called uh, midi json so we converted it to a json file so uh, the browser uh, can read this easier, I would say. Um, and um, so we need to load this file. So we, we use an operator called Ajax request. It's also a bad name. But with this op, you can load JSON files. And it's, um, So I can just select the, the MIDI JSON file that I uploaded 
and um, um, it already outputs me um, some information here, so track names. So you see we have those um, tracks in the audio file. So there is one mute glitch. I think uh, he called it glitch because we wanted to use this for visual effects. So he created a track with only instruments that we want to synchronize. Um, that was the idea um, back then. So um, actually, um, let me open that other patch again and then we look at the data. So this right now is a different, it's not our sound that we are using, it's a different one. So I want to um, Or am I wrong? No, right? <laughs> Sorry. Um, so this is, yeah, more on fine. Okay. So we'll just use this patch to load in our um, MP3 and MIDI file. So. Upload the MIDI and upload the MP3. So now I will select uh, the right MP3 file. And use uh, the right JSON file. Turn this down a bit. So you see those instruments there. It's just one instrument, this whole bass effect. So it takes a long time to finish, but it's, it's nice to see the progress of it. So we could also use, we can already use this information to make our intro better that we um, basically synchronized by hand. We could just use the progress of those notes, that progress we get from the, the MIDI op. And um, yeah, after the intro, let's see. One thing I just want to say to everybody, because this can look like a lot of stuff, and it is, but you shouldn't worry about that. You, kind of like make this setup once right that you know you, you have your musician that you, you agree with them please format your midi data in this way they'll get it they're an they're an electronic musician and you set this up once and you can just reuse this patch later on so uh, don't let it intimidate you yeah so basically what i'm after is i think the c sharp two one um, I'm not sure. I think that's a good one. I mean, drum machine, I think, is the kick. Oh, no, it's not. Uh, it's, uh, it's doing the kick and the snare, drum machine. So C2 is your uh, uh, kick and E2 is your snare. And Microton is adding some extra drum sound. Yeah, so we want to basically get this C, this one, like the... Uh, Microtronic multi, right? Um, so, um, yeah, let's just try it. So, um, should I go into detail of this patch here? So this patch actually gets 
all the track names and the, displays them next to each other and then it gets so the MIDI op outputs um, the track names then the instrument names like the B2 and the C3 um, then it gives you a progress and a velocity mm -hmm. and um, so what you see here the the size of the circle here this is the progress basically so how long is this note being pressed basically yep. it's the original idea I guess yep. um, I think the information in uh, uh, in velocity is not really used or it's not really exported like in a correct way or something I don't know like I I am totally not an audio guy so I have no idea about this so most of the time I just use the progress to uh, display stuff because um, most of the time this works the best. best. Yep. Okay, let's let's use the MIDI JSON up. So um, we could go here and basically just copy all of this into our patch, but I don't want to do this right now. Um, um, but often we we just do this um, because we need it really often to look like ah okay what's this new instrument or something like this so we we make like a, a keyboard shortcut uh, to to show this as an overlay mm -hmm. and then you can you can toggle between it so also also like the FFT area um, texture that we saw with the yellow rectangle you can you can create like a little setup that this is your overlay you can turn it on and off while you work yep. on the demo um, I closed my patch, I think. Oh no, there it is. Okay. Um, so I already created a MIDI JSON op and um, um, so this also works like the the audio buffer player. You basically you just put in a time and then it gives you uh, some results. So we want to connect this time input here also to a uh, Timeline time. Okay. And one thing I just want to say to everybody is this, right? So let's say in this case, if, just correct me if I'm wrong, Gabe Panda. Uh, Panda's been working with Ronnie on this demo. So Ronnie supplies like an audio track. And after he's exported the audio track, he exports the MIDI data as well. And because they both, they're both connected to timeline time, they're in synchronization with each other. Just want to explain that for the people that don't normally use this stuff. Yeah, exactly. Totally, totally right. So um, this basically works like an audio player, but without outputting any audio. But we have those information here. For example, we have an array of names. So this is our instruments that are right now, like at this point in time, those instruments are being active or played, right? So we see here in the third track, it's E2 right now. Um, so maybe we just try uh, to look at it. What, what, how does it, what is E2? What is it doing here? So we can use the names array and just say um, array get string. So basically we are accessing, so this is a number of values, right? So, um, this is value 0, this is value 1, this is value 2, and this value is E2 right now. So we can say from this array of, of names, we want the second one, because this is our the track. Um, oh, I closed it. Um, this is some track we want to get information from. So we just say, give us the value at index 2. So right now the value is E2. So Let's just display this um, on top of everything. So I will just create um, an op called text mesh um, that can just display text basically. So let me make the preview small again. Um, and let's make it red. So when I press play now, you see yeah. what's, what's happening in this channel there. So we can say like, okay, what's what's happening in channel three? So 
this is this is actually what we were after, right? So this is the C sharp two. So um, we could so how, how would we just so sorry, Pan, I mean some threats. How would we just you know for the people that would never do this before and they think, oh, I just want to get one note out of this and do something with it, right? It's exactly. like one. So um, that's what I want to do. So um, we can. Uh, so we get this string out here. So you see, um, so when we go earlier, you see um, it's outputting yep. the name. So we can say um, equals string. So we can check if this is actually C sharp two. So right. okay. And you see here the result is false. So when I press play, you see for a short amount of time, uh, yeah. it's even better. Then um, it's true because that's where it could be shown. So just the basic note um, going on, basically. Okay. Cool. Yeah. So. Um, Maybe we want this whole overlay, the circle and the, the rectangle frame. We only want to show this um, when this note is being played. So we can add an if true. So you see right now nothing is executed down here. But when I uh, activate this, then you see the circle is drawn. Right. So I can create uh, connect this string equals to the if true then. And now it's only shown when the string is exactly C sharp two. Let me just remove the text. That's really cool. So one thing I just want to say here is like just this little chain that Pandas built. There, you know, if you if you just got like. Um, kick, snare, hi-hat, and a bass line, and a lead and you know, you've already got like five or six channels of information that you can use to um, drive things, and you know, the sky's the limit, right? You could get that number, you could put it into a variable, and it could be driving something on the intro patch, and it could be driving something different on the donut patch, and something different on the tunnel patch. Um, yeah. You can be really wild with it. Yeah, so Mark has this Twitch stream where he like controls cables with uh, with Ableton, and there he's doing it like in a similar way but totally different by re sending real MIDI uh, data to cables and control cables this way, and we just do it basically like in an offline mode, like without the the DAW, like the, without the music program that created the MP3. Um, but you can also use this for live. Uh, visuals and live synchronization to to music software. Um, and um, so you talked about the bank. So I want to show we can like can we? What do you want to do, Panda? Um, so I want to trigger an animation basically when this note is playing. So okay. Um, Basically, we have this bang on. So this yeah. is triggered. Um, yeah, so a trigger, you need a trigger, yeah. if a trigger if true. Oh. Yeah, I just want to explain it. So um, when I connect this um, to our material, so we have an um, alpha input here. So when I connect this and I click the bang button, you see, uh, it could be a bit longer. You see it's fading out. It's it's abruptly there and then it's fading out. And this is what we want with our MIDI signal. But right now, this MIDI signal basically is a Boolean and not a trigger. So uh, we have to convert it basically. So we have an operator that's called trigger. If true, um, trigger true, I always type in, <laughs> it finds it for me. Trigger, trigger change true. So we can connect this to our bang. 
let's see, Flomo. Yeah, my computer is dying. I think it's OBS. I, I had this with one stream where after about an hour and a half, that's about now, I, I started like losing some CPU. Oh, there we go. It's good again now. It's, it's super strange now. Um, yeah, so... Right you. Are you a part of the demo where that plays? Mm -hmm. So you see we are triggering now when, when the mode is on. And now we have like a little fake off. And if you want to make this like more more dynamic or like you don't want to spend too much time on uh, um, actually timing the, the, the different um, elements that we see here. So maybe I would just add uh, another circle, a round one this time. And try and, uh, and now I want to cycle through them. So I can I can yeah. create a trigger an incrementer. Yeah. So um, and this one every time um, let me just show it like this. Every time this increment is being triggered, it outputs, it counts up by one. So I can just connect this to a trigger change true and get this number in here. And let's say like the, the length is four because, or let's, let's say five, because we only have like four inputs and sometimes I don't want to have this happen. So when I press play now, you see like the, yeah. the element is changing all the time. Like, it's just cycling through them. So when I enable flow mode, you see it's this, then this, then this, then this. So... This is a great example of how you can just come up with a really simple rule and then get really different visuals from that. And if you just would put even five or six or ten of these rules together, you basically got the demo. <laughs> yeah, um, totally. Um, I mean... Um, maybe this is a bad example. Maybe it's like you you want a random number, so you can just uh, remove this incrementer here, and you just create a random trigger random number. There you go. Um, to current, and let's just say for put it on integer. Maybe just so people know it's possible. So right now it's outputting float this and it outputs whole numbers. Yeah, so now it's just randomly decided which one uh, which one it plays. Oh. Ah, there's the instrument. Is okay. yeah. And all this is just off one note on signal, right? So we just convert a boolean to a trigger and then that trigger we can create an animated sequence with a bang, create random numbers, the sky's the limit with this kind of stuff. And this is why it's really good to uh, know your simple ops, like bang and trigger change true and trigger random number, because the moment you've got the grasp of those basic ops inside the cables, um, you, you can really combine them and come up with so many different ways of making things happen. Yeah, yeah it's not happening in, in the early part. Yeah. Yeah, so this is this is the media input and um, like normally in a demo when my computer is not that slow I would say you do something, you create um, a little overlay in the end. Um, as we just did, uh, I will do it again, text mesh and I will create um, a system that shows me stuff so it so we have this text mesh here, and we have another text mesh um, which uh, we want to show the, the current time. So oh, but, like... sorry, I'm going to interrupt. Um, don't we have an op called Timeline UI, which bundles a lot of this stuff all into? Yeah, not really. Oh, okay. 
Um, yeah, the, pl the plan is that it does that, but it's it's really not that good right now. Okay, all right. So, um, so basically, Panda right now is creating like visual feedback for himself, so he knows where he is and what's happening and things like that. That's always a really handy thing to do. Yeah, so I want to sh see like. Um, the current time that we are at um, and uh, just put it up here and yeah. uh, you think we have to just restart OBS for this or yeah, you could do. I mean, really, Panda, for like what you're showing with the stream, it's fine. I can see it's quite annoying with the FPS drops there and the renderer, but like everything you're doing right now is completely visible. What do you think is part? A lot of people are watching what you're patching right now. Yeah. So I'm just, I'm just creating this debug information basically, and um, so I could create. Um, Another if true then. And um, add an off that's called key press learn. So I just want to press D and then I want to see this debug information basically. So I can click learn here and press D. And now when I press the D button, I see this value. So I can watch my demo again and also in full screen or something and then I can press uh, click the patch and press D and then I see that information yep. so um, that's great so often we create like an overlay uh, with a lot of information like all the MIDI uh, signals all the FFT stuff um, and just create an overlay so we see what what's happening right now and then we can say ah let's maybe use this note to trigger something and then we we connect it uh, somewhere else. So um, it, it's super handy to build like a yep. little debug system. And yeah. I would just put this away again. Well, Panda just said makes complete sense. You know, if you're using any kind of program, if it's, if it's Photoshop or um, Illustrator or um, After Effects or something, you know, if you wouldn't have visual feedback of what's going on, where you are at time and things like that, it's really difficult to use. So, you know, it's a good idea to kind of make that yourself, like uh, Panda just did. Just a really quick, simple thing with the key press. Great, I didn't think of it. Yeah, it's just it's just a handy uh, shortcut um, for some things. Yeah, um, that was the media information. Yeah, great. Yeah, that's great. Do we have, do we, do we have like an example MIDI file in the library files, no, huh? No. Yeah, no. we should totally do that, yeah. Uh, I mean, I can probably get like a really small audio snippet and the MIDI file from somebody, or you could as well. I think that'd be really handy for people that um, see this kind of thing. But yeah. Can, you know? I also want to have, um, I never did that, like a display, like a tracker where like all the MIDI data is scrolling. Yeah. Scrolling um, from from bottom to top, and you can um, get more books to patch. You can see like like it would also look really cool. Uh, we we oh, yeah. at one point. Um, yeah. So so that's actually it for the whole content um, part. Right. Um, so. Um, so the last thing is basically you want to export uh, your demo and, and to upload it to a party system. Did you have anything, Mark, or did you want it to say? Um, I think the, the thing I just want to like um, to say to close off this part of what you've done is, you know, um, everybody that looks at this, you know, everything starts small, right? The, the sub patches, the, the root trigger, and the time, uh, sorry, the time sequence, you know, it's like, you, you don't have to think when you look at a big cables patch and go, good God, how did people put this together? Because it all started like this. It was really small and there's lots of little ideas. And if you just learn the basics of like how to copy paste, 
how to do time sequence and things like that. It's really not that difficult to make a, a sequence of events which can add up to uh, be a demo. Because um, I've heard at least quite a few times, especially in the meetups, of people like, wow, how, 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 how do people do this kind of stuff? Yeah, they start like this. They have something really small on the screen. They start with a cube and a circle and things like that. And then they build it out from there. So I'm just trying to encourage people not to be intimidated whenever they see like a big cables patch, because everybody can make a demo, like everybody. Totally, I mean, um, like we just did something in two hours um, and um, I think it, with a little bit of um, training, um, I think everyone can pull this off. And um, I mean, ignore all the, the media stuff and just chaining like the time sequence, like just chaining um, scenes together. Um, this is already half half of the rent, right? Yeah. Um, and um, and yeah, just don't don't concentrate on the whole. Like concentrate on the little things, like on the scenes. This is important stuff. Putting it together like this, like if you did this once, it's it's a really easy setup. Um, the most important thing is basically to have like the scenes, and they look good, and they fit together, and and this is the the kind of stuff. Ah, one thing I was thinking of, Panda, before you carry on, is, um, you know, so a lot of people that make demos, everybody, it's a collaborative effort, right? It could be one person making all the visuals and one person doing the music. Maybe there's two people working on the visuals. So imagine that Panda would want to make me a collaborator of this patch, right? You know, normally his patch would be private right now, but he's like, hey, Andrew, I want you to go in there and paste that stuff that you've been working on and put it in there. So you can go to collaborators, you can type in the name of the user there, uh, you hit the send invitation button. I will, if I accept that invitation, I now have access to that patch together with Panda. Um, now you don't want to both be working on it on the same time because you know you've only got one state that you can save. But you could arrange with each of like, hey, you're going to work on the patch tomorrow. Cool. And basically, you can do that without publishing your secret demo. So, <laughs> for yeah. to say, <laughs> yeah, most of the time we have like one one person that is basically like the master of the demo, like the um, the one who, who puts stuff in here. Yeah. And um, and then often we we just switch seats basically and um, everyone is working at it. But most of the time there's one that puts everything together and uh, the others are producing scenes yeah. basically. And then they say, Here's my patch, here's my effect, uh, just copy it over. And um, this is how we do it most of the time, yeah. And so if you're working with a musician, for example, and they think, oh, I'm working on some music tonight and Panda's not online, you know, if he's a collaborator, mm -hmm. he can export his music, just re-import it, and as long as he knows which two ops to go to, to say, browse to this file and browse to that file, he can see the visuals and go, oh, is this working the right way? So that opens up a lot of possibilities uh, with the collaborator thing. Yeah, totally. Also, it's much easier to show people what you are working on. Um, um, they just can any time go there and look at it. It's not you don't have to send an Excel file sure. or something like this um, or compile it yourself or something. You can just go there yep. and look at it, basically. Um, yeah, so one thing I wanted to mention, um, so we had this, I don't, I cannot show the performance up right now because it will always be crappy, but you saw in the beginning, like the first time we load the patch, it takes a long time to um, uh, to load the different effects, so we have an operator that's managing all the loading stuff. Right. And um, this also, place automatically the demo. This is what is happening right now. So so this app doesn't execute anything before every image and all the audio is loaded. And after everything is loaded, then it just starts rendering. Before that, it, show, it just triggers this loading output here. So we can add something here that says loading. So when we reload this patch now, hopefully you can see the loading text. No, this is too quick. <laughs> I don't know. No, there. Oh, there we go. Yeah. See that loading. And then it switches, and now it's it's playing the demo. 
Uh, Panda, can you just explain to people how you could use the loading status up to do the like initialization of like um, the the things that haven't been triggered yet? You know, that's yeah. start at the beginning. I think it's really hard to explain right now because I cannot like the um, performance of would just show. Hmm. Well, maybe just explain it. Just like yeah. Yeah, so basically what you want to do when you start the demo for the first time, you want to initialize all the shaders and all the meshes that they are probably compiled and uploaded through the graphics card. So you need some, so, so Cables doesn't do this for you. Um, so you need some setup to do this. So for example, uh, when it's loading, you can, um, or when, when the loading is finished, you can just trigger all your effects. So we have, uh, like the variables, we have something where you can send trigger somewhere. So we have yep. a trigger send and a trigger receive. Yeah. And um, I mean, you just plug that into all of those sub patches, right? For yeah, example, you, you plug it. Uh, you plug it in um, there, and you plug it into every sub patch, basically. So this would mean when the patch is loaded, um, it will just once trigger all of those ops. So then all the shaders, you, you can be sure all the shaders are compiled and everything is initialized. So I can demonstrate this when I add another trigger send and enable flow mode. So now I can press <laughs> Y. Oh, we don't have a button now. Okay. <laughs> I will just add this. Uh-oh, I'm just doing it on light. <laughs> so we have a, this up as a nice handy button there. So when I click this button, <laughs> um, right, I need to select, uh, I, I haven't created one. So we create a new trigger. Variable. We yeah. call it pre-init. Um, and we want to receive this, so we have to select it here. So I can now click this. And it's just dying. Um, and then you see all of those things are triggered. Um, so this would happen then in the loading sequence. Yep. Yep. Um, so this trigger send has a yep. pre in it. And this is when it's being loaded, it will just initialize like pre-rendering all of this and then you don't have if the first time you run it you will have stuttering between the scenes this way you can just uh, initialize it and then it should be smooth because everything was was rendered before already right cool um yeah you will see this when when you are there um you will see this the stuttering but also like if you have problems uh, like this then just contact us and ask us questions where we, we, we want to help, uh, help you do a demo, basically. So, okay, so let's imagine we finished the whole demo um, and we are at the demo party and you just have to upload your, your release to the party system there. Um, but right now we are in the web, so we want to create an executable file that runs on Windows and they don't need to have a web server or uh, the right browser or whatever. We just want to create an Excel file. So in Cables you can, you can always click um, the export button and this will create a zip file for you with all the files in there uh, that are needed to display this demo. I mean, this demo doesn't have really a lot of files uh, except like okay so you can see the files here so we have like a font file and um, we have this MIDI file we have the mp3 so the mp3 is basically the biggest file um, and um, also the MIDI JSON so we can download this file and we get uh, a zip file so um, let me just open this and so we have a zip file, uh, my little demo, it's called in this case. Um, and here you have all the files 
like your mp3 file, your font file, your MIDI file and here you have like the, the code that is needed to run um, the whole patch so, so it's all in there. So you can take this and upload this to a web server and then you can open it in, in your browser, the URL and then you can watch the demo online basically. Um, so this is what we often do when we work for clients or something. But um, so we want to create an um, an Excel file. So um, we have so we are working on a better solution right now. But um, you can download. Uh, I created this repository actually today. Um, so say when the when when the did come to existence. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So we we are we. We will have a better solution soon, but uh, right now it's it's not there yet. So you can go into this repository. Um, we will also write this in the YouTube uh, channel. And this basically is just a Windows executable. So um, I'm on a Mac right now, but I just want to see uh, show you how it, how it works without executing it. But um, I hope you believe me that it, it will work. So So you download this this zip file and um, uh, wait a second uh. oh yeah so you download the zip file and um, you can uh, uncompress it and then you see um, this is wrong. you see there is a, a demo.exe in there. So um, this is uh, your exe. If you execute it on Windows, it will, ju will just start the demo. So we have the export and we have this. So we have to take the files from the export and put them into the resources app folder. So you just copy the JS and the asset folder in here and oh. then you can start the Excel file and then it will show your demo. This is all explained here, um, all the steps of that are necessary. Yeah. Cool. Um, so this is this thing is called Electron. This is basically like Chrome without the UI. So this is just a browser without the, the back Button and the URL input uh, bar and something and stuff like this. So it is quite big, but this is just the most handy way to submit a demo to a demo party because they maybe they don't have internet, they cannot open your URL. So we package it like this, and then you have an uh, Excel file that you can double click and then you can just run it. That's awesome. And then uh, the Windows user sees it in full screen. Yeah. Because I mean, I just want to say this: like, um, you know, there's a difference between making a demo and being somebody that makes tools that enable people to make um, demos. Um, when I started with the demo scene, um, I, I had no idea how to make a 64K executable and these kind of things. And a lot of people told me, "Don't bother doing it; it's a world of pain." So they made this tropical Trevor in this regard from Puber, and you know, he he made this tool uh, which allowed me to make a demo. So don't don't get stuck with how all this works. If you can follow the instructions and make a cool demo and it works, just do that and enjoy a beer on the way. That's my uh, motto with this kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Maybe the next step is you code a demo or something like this. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. But just start making a demo. We, we need demos at demo parties. That's the, that's the thing. Yeah. Wow, that's uh, I'm, I'm, I, I learned a lot of new stuff of tonight, you know? Yeah, it's like whenever I normally see one of Pando's demo patches, of course, it's a lot more bigger than this one. So this is a really nice uh, way to uh, deconstruct uh, how this stuff gets put together. I think there's a wealth of information in there for people. Yeah. Um, yeah, we would love to hear how, how you, what you think of this um, tutorial and or what do you think could be easier or what you want to see and um, yeah we will do those live streams every week so just ask us what you want to see yeah. um, in the future i'm planning on showing the custom shader up 
So ah yeah. Um, so with this op, you can write your own shaders. Um, so you you can combine basically shader like your own shaders with meshes. Uh, or you can write a particle system with it. Um, I really want to go deep uh, with this. Um, yeah, it's, like it's, uh, it's, that's going to be awesome, man. I've seen the stuff that you do with that. That's going to be really exciting for people. Yeah, so this is, is one of, yeah, this is one of the things I want to do in the next weeks. Um, so um, uh, it's a bit more coding related, but um, yeah, I think we should do this um, because it's also like for many people, they. So I think it's also people want to write shaders and make a demo out of them without yep. building the whole framework. So you can code you can code shaders in Cables without coding the whole framework stuff around it. You can just write yep. the shaders and then synchronize them with uh, FFT or with the MIDI stuff and uh, yep. use them with that. So this is one of the plans we want to show. Yeah, one thing I was thinking of, like after watching you do this whole stream, I'm thinking of maybe um, bugging Ronnie or uh, Obverse um, to see if I can just get like a little fragment of some audio and MIDI. I was thinking it might be really cool to give like a breakdown on like lots of cool um, tips and tricks, you know, with triggering events, um, like what you were doing there with the um, string equals and things like that, because. That, that can just give somebody so much um, potential to make a demo of just getting that beta and mangling it and using it in yeah. um, different ways. There's a totally. lot of different ways we can go with this. There's so many, there's not enough uh, hours in the time to make all the streams that we'd like to, to show everything, basically. Now I'm super hyped. Yeah, <laughs> but maybe, maybe, like, I mean, you do this VJ thing, like maybe yeah. um, you do one episode where you just repatch it uh, so it runs off a MIDI file or something. Yeah, I yeah. Mean, that would that's... be possible, right? Yeah. yeah, 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 for sure. Well, that's the cool part. I can actually get that Ableton Live file, just export the audio and MIDI. Yeah. You know, so then it's still familiar. Uh, so that's actually a really cool idea. Yeah, that yeah. sounds like a good one. Yeah, Hardy, that would be super awesome. And this is why I said this, because I saw you there. So uh, maybe, maybe, I, I think you would have have a lot of fun with the uh, custom shader operator. Yeah. Uh, and Hardy, um, I'm going to look for it now. We actually have, uh, because, well, like Tom said, you know, we've got a uh, hundred um, YouTube tutorials now, and we've actually got um, um, the basic um, video, which gets you completely and utterly started with the custom shader. Like we made a tutorial about this a long time ago. I'm just oh, going to really? post it. Yeah, yeah, we've got it. I'm going to post it now. Um, <laughs> Did you just say really? <laughs> That's so cool. Well, there it is. Uh, we've got like a 10, 11 minute, uh, 8 minute 40, and you now know how to use the basic custom shader and put it into a texture. I'll just use it. It's all in there. Um, yeah, there we go. Oh, God, hearing my voice back from over a year ago. That's <laughs> terrible. <laughs> uh, okay, so, yeah. So we, we already have. Really. Yeah, so I just wanted to say that now. So when Pando's going to do the custom shader tutorial, you might want to just dive into this one for 10 or 15 minutes and try it a bit yourself, and then it's going to be a lot easier to follow. I think one or two small things have changed, but pretty much almost everything is exactly the same. Yeah, um, yeah. I have to watch this again. <laughs> Sorry, I started, <laughs> it's okay. Uh, no worries. Um, that's, that's what you get when you got a hundred videos. So you forget yeah. a few. Yeah, I, I just want to concentrate probably more on the um, vertex shader um, stuff. And, yeah, yeah, sure. Um, yeah. So um, yeah, I think we should do more about audio synchronization. I mean, um, that's that's one big topic we we already. Uh, uh, do, but I think there could be even more, but yeah. Okay, so I think uh, I think we are through, right? Uh, are no. there any questions? That's the main thing. If you, if you, if you want to plunder the demo scene as a uh, brain, now is the time. I mean, I, I think everybody's been sat there at home, pen and paper, writing down all these questions, or they didn't. <laughs> Yeah, probably.
let's just give everybody like 20 seconds due to the, the time delay of the internet and lag and stuff like that. All right. All right, so it's kind of quiet. Um, I think, uh, I don't think, uh, oh yeah, also, uh, fuck racism from Steema, definitely. Um, definitely, yeah, that's, uh, yeah, that's been a really big thing going on for everybody the last few days. That's why we got the title of the stream there, uh, like that, basically. Yeah, fuck racism. Crazy times. Uh, yeah, crazy times, crazy times. Crazy times indeed. All right, uh, Panda, I don't think um, anybody's got any questions. I mean, I think that was already a, a great overload of good information. Uh, oh, there you go. You explained too well, no questions left. Well, that's that's an amazing thanks, statement. <laughs> Thank you. There we go. Ah, thanks, everybody. That's so, uh, that's so nice to hear that kind of stuff. Um, okay, so <laughs> I think that's pretty much it for tonight then, right, Panda? Yeah, that's it, okay. Yeah, thank you all for joining in, and um, see you next week. Ah, sorry, Panda, one quick question. Are we, are we going to try and make a really stripped-down version of this patch for people and publish it at yeah. some point in the near future? Yeah, I would just publish this, right? Or do you think it's too big already? Ah, I, I will I, publish this, I, I, and maybe we will do a... Uh, I'll tell you what, you publish time. this, yeah. and then if I've got a little bit of time um, in the next day or two, I'll do what I call the beginner super stripped down version with just a couple of cool cubes and some stuff like that, and just make an even simpler uh, yeah. version. I think this is great, by the way, it's, especially if somebody's watching the video, um, but it'd be good to just have that as a template. Maybe we can make a new template demo. Yeah, with you know? a few more comments and stuff like this, but yeah, uh, um, yeah that we will do. Okay. Cool. Great. Awesome. Okay. Uh, all right, well, I'd like to say massive thanks to everybody that um, joined us and watched us. Um, again, it's great that you uh, participated and uh, we're here and uh, we're looking really forward to all the demos you're all going to make because we know who you are. You are watching. We, we expect great things. things. Oh, yeah, totally. <laughs> okay, great. Thank you all. All right. Goodbye. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye.